All right, Mark Warnke here, packouts.com. Okay, this is session two of our comprehensive nutritional plan and information based on science that Christy, my staffer, put together. She's the bomb. Uh, tons of time and energy and the resources here. Um, we're gonna break down uh, the nutritional plan for kids. Um, we're gonna talk about grass hay and we're gonna talk about you know phosphorus and calcium ratios in that individual hay. So, let's start. Nutritional plan for adults, bucks, weathers, and non-pregnant does. So bullet points, access to pasture, feed, and roughage, free choice. Allow frequent access to browse, woody plants, pasture, range, and grass. You want clean water daily. Fresh access to loose mineral supplement for your area. And the reason we do free mineral, by the way, you guys, is that it's the same if you were to eat a bag of potato chips, um, you know, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to go get a drink of water. So we want them eating a lot of mineral and loose mineral will promote that. If they have to lick from a block, they have a tendency to wear their teeth down and they also just don't get as much salt. Um, free access to baking soda if you choose. Um, myself, I only like that with little babies um, because again, it'll help them if they have bloat issues, they'll kind of monitor their own. Free access to loose salt, essentially in hot, dry climates to encourage water uptake, two grams per animal. And then pack oats allow free forage on hikes to balance nutritional needs and improve room and health. So if you want your goats to be really healthy, take them for hikes and let them eat. Kids, mother's milk with her colostrum within the first eight hours or a minimum of 20 ounces of colostrum. Remember, if you're concerned about your does um, or you're getting uh, from a doe that you're concerned with CAE or disease transmission, um, then you wanna make sure that you use bagged colostrum. It's super important, it's not as good as mother's. Um, but you also want to be conscientious that um, you also want to do testing on your dose. I test my dose twice a year um, and um, yeah, you're going to want to do the testing because it's super important to stop CAE. Kids will generally consume milk until they're four months um, and it's nice to have them do that. The more milk you give them, uh, not in individual feedings, but frequency, the better they'll grow. Introduce grass week two to begin ruminant microbiome development. So that means you're just gonna put it out, let them, let them chew on it as they will. Free access to a loose mineral supplement for your area. So you want them to have access to mineral and show them how to use that and begin access to a baking soda if you choose. Free access to loose salt. If you choose to feed grain to kids, do so in a measured amount of one half pound, eight ounce, per day, not free choice. Again, feeding grain is not a requirement, and because it does pose a risk, I do not recommend it. Uh, additional items. So these items may be considered and are not necessary. They include snacks or treats and other Medicaid um, mentions. Add apple cider vinegar to drinking water to improve digestion, immunity, and enzymes. So feed cabbages and other plants that are in that family. It's called the family of brassicus. So if you need to look it up, it'll tell you what that is. Um, you want to feed it in moderation as snacks, not only as a main food source, high levels of brassicus can be toxic. So be aware of that. Um, snacks, peanuts in a shell or black oil sunflower seeds contain a good amount of phosphorus and can be used in small amounts as a treat. These are also high in fat. This takes into consideration if your goats do not receive ample exercise. They provide extra minerals, zinc, iron, selenium, vitamin E for muscles. Beet shreds, pellets for coats, fuller, healthier body and energy. Feed ammonium chloride to acidify the urine as a preventative at one gram per animal per day in two gallons of water and less present in grain feed. According to the University of Colorado, ammonium chloride is effective at, in dissolving struvite stones, which are phosphorus stones, not calcium oxalate stones. So don't forget, if you happen to have a goat that does get urinary calculi, the most critical thing that you do is make sure you get a necropsy and find out what kind of stone he has. 
you cannot solve this problem until you know what kind of stone you're developing. It is so critical because that little, that little guy has the key to your goat's future on your land. If you have one that's developed stones, it's likely you have others and you need to find out by getting those stones. You can send them in. AC is a treatment, ammonium chloride is a treatment, is one tablespoon or one or two cups of water and given is an oral drench for one week. Provide fresh drinking water following the drench. Consult your veterinarian with that. If you believe stones are present in your goats, seek out a veterinarian quickly. The stone must be identified as a struvite or calcium oxalate before treatment. If you don't know what it is, you can't treat for it. If the stones are calcium oxalate stones, adding more water to their system will be life-threatening and the surgery uh, will be required. But by the way, I do wanna say there are surgeries that you can do to save your goat. It's not guaranteed. They're usually quite expensive. And um, I would tell you to seek advice on that. You should be prepared that the majority of goats that I've seen, I think the cheapest I've seen is around 1200 and the average has been closer to two grand. So you should kind of know that's what it costs. Um, the most effective way initially and affordable is to cut off the pizzle. Your vet may or may not know how to do that. I will tell you that one of the most difficult things to do is to get the penis to extend. You literally have to go in there with a big, long hemostat, grab the end of the penis, pull it out, cut off the pizzle. And I've heard of people doing it at home on their own. If you literally cannot raise a vat, um, it's painful on them, they're gonna flail, you'll need multiple people, there's no way you can do it by yourself, or at least I don't think so. Um, but at least knowing what to do, and the pizzle, by the way, is that little long, weird, extension off the end of the penis it's very thin looks like a like a butterfly finger so um it's it's small and, and you cut that off and sometimes the blockage is happening there and you'll know because just urine will dump out um so there you go Grass nutritional information. Geographically, grass options will vary, including below is a list of grasses with their calcium phosphorus ratios. If providing only grass roughage to your goats, your calcium to phosphorus ratio should be two to one or three to one. That's two or three parts calcium, one part phosphorus at the highest. Include your water test results in the total calcium to phosphorus ratio. We see the highest frequency of people getting into problems with urinary calculi is happening from their water. So you need to test your water. It's absolutely imperative for you to know whether you have hard water or not. That's the highest frequency we're seeing in this community of urinary calculi is people with hard water. Orchard and Timothy grass offer a balanced ratio. As highlighted, alfalfa has a high calcium content compared to orchard and Timothy grass. Alfalfa may be, re, may be supplied as a supplement in winter months during high energy requirements such as rut or pregnancy and may be introduced as a portion of roughage fed to growing kids. Some suggest a 50-50 mix of alfalfa grass while others never feed alfalfa. The high calcium level of alfalfa mixed with a high calcium level of water source may cause the build of calculi. Gear your nutritional plans towards the calcium to phosphorus ratio of two to one to three to one. And then, uh, you know, that I'm not gonna read off this whole thing, but in, in the actual uh, document itself, and again, you can download this, it gives you the ratio of all these different foods. And so it's really important to, to know that information. I hope that you found chapter two helpful in trying to decide your nutritional plan on um, your farm for your goats. Um, and again, if you want more in-depth information, you want to participate in things like live Q&As that I put on with the Goat Club members where you can ask me direct questions that will actually do the research for you and find those answers out to anything. I may know it off the cuff and we may have to research it, but we will find an answer for you as a member. And then as well, you get to watch me troubleshoot my own goats on a week by week basis, how I develop my farm to be a company to both pack goats, meat goats, dairy goats, and... Um, pet goats. So um, be a member. And if you want just more in-depth information as well, don't forget I have a lot of courses out there. And when you're a member, you get the courses at half price. So I hope you find that helpful. Mark Warnke signing out.